The answer to this first question over here is C. If you want to know why, stay tuned right now. Okay, in this question we are given a few different molecules and we're asked to sort them according to boiling point from highest to lowest. Now, In order to do this, there are actually two different things that we have to first consider. Number one is what kind of intermolecular forces do each of the different molecules possess? And number two, what is the size and branchiness of the different molecules? I'll talk about each of these right now. Foremost, for organic compounds at least, there are three primary uh, types of intermolecular forces we have to consider. The first is hydrogen bonding, the second is dipole-dipole, and the third is London forces. Now if you need a review of what these are, I'm going to go ahead and post a link right here. That will lead you to a lecture in which I talk about these in greater detail. Suffice it to say for now this, of these three forces, Hydrogen bonding is the strongest, followed by dipole-dipole, followed by London. Which means that if you have two different molecules that are roughly the same size and same shape, one has hydrogen bonding and the other just has dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding molecules will have a higher boiling point. If you have two different molecules that are roughly the same size and shape, one has dipole-dipole and one just has London forces, the one with dipole-dipole will generally have a higher boiling point than the one with just London forces. And generally speaking, pretty much all organic molecules have London forces as well as, for some of them, one or more of the additional forces up there. Now we have to keep in mind that boiling point is a function of stickiness. In other words, if I've got a molecule swimming around in a sea of other molecules of himself, the more that molecule sticks to other molecules of itself, the more heat is required in order to get them to unstick and hence separate and convert from a liquid into a gas. That is to boil. Hydrogen bonding once again contributes to a significant amount of stickiness. These guys stick together really, really tight. You have to pump in a ton of heat to get them to move apart, break apart, and convert from a liquid into a gas to boil. That's the primary reason why water, which has tons of hydrogen bonding, has such a high boiling point even though it has such a small relative molecular weight. Now if you're in a circumstance where you've got different molecules that all have the same kind of intermolecular force. Let's say they all have hydrogen bonding or they all have London forces. How in the world do you determine which of them will have the highest boiling point and which will have the lowest? Well for that we move to number two. We have to focus on size and branchiness. Generally speaking if the type of uh, intermolecular force is the same, the larger the molecule, the higher the boiling point. Also generally speaking the less branchy the molecule, the higher the boiling point. I'll explain why as we move down to these examples. <clears throat> I've been given N-heptane, 2-methylhexane, 2-2-dimethylpentane, and N-octane. I've drawn all of their skeleton structures so that you can see them. And now I'm going to try and figure out which of these molecules is going to have the highest boiling point, which one will have the lowest. As we look at all these, you'll notice I've just got a bunch of carbons and hydrogens. These are all hydrocarbons, which means that all they have is London forces. Because none of them have anything more strong than London forces, I cannot sort them by boiling point according to rule number one. I'm going to have to move down to rule number two. Rule number two is larger the molecule, higher the boiling point, generally speaking, and less branchy, higher the boiling point. Let's look at this. Which of these guys is the largest? N-octane. No branching. Nice straight, well, a nice sawtooth molecule. That guy's going to have the highest boiling point. Why? Well, because it's nice and straight, no branches, n-octane can stack on top of other molecules of n-octane very, very tightly. They can stick together like a big, long uh, piece of Velcro. What that means is it's going to take a lot of heat to get those molecules to break apart, to separate out their London forces, and get them to convert from a liquid into a gas, that is, to boil. So molecule number four is going to have the highest boiling point. Let's look at these others. This guy has branching, this guy has branching, this one, and heptane doesn't have branching. Now, and heptane, once again, doesn't have branching, but it, it is smaller than an octane, which is why it has a lower boiling point. Nice, beautiful, straight molecule, same analogy as we talked about with the n-octane, but it just has one carbon less, which means it's a slightly shorter piece of Velcro. So it takes less heat to get them to separate out than n-octane, and hence takes less heat to get them to convert from a liquid to gas, that is, to boil. So, 
molecule number one and heptane will have the next highest boiling point. Now as we look at these two molecules, I've got this one right here, the 2,2-dimethylpentane and the 2-methylhexane. Both of these are roughly the same size, that is they have the, I think, the exact same structural formula. But one of them is much more branchy, the 2,2-dimethylpentane. What does that mean? Well, I've got 2,2-dimethylpentane, it's kind of branchy, which means that it can't stack as tightly on top of other molecules of 2,2-dimethylpentane, which means it can't stick quite as much, which means it doesn't take as much heat to get it to wiggle apart, and then hence convert from a liquid to a gas or boil. So 2,2-dimethylpentane will have the lowest boiling point, and the 2-methylhexane will be right in the middle. The answer to this next question is B. If you'd like to know why, I'll explain it right now. Okay, here I'm given the same kind of question just with, with some different molecules. I've got this uh, methyl amine and, and this NH2, which is an amine stuck to a chain, and this one's stuck to a different chain, this one's stuck to some different stuff. Which of these is going to have the highest boiling point? Well, you'll notice that because I've got a nitrogen stuck to hydrogens, that is hydrogen bonding. I've got to stop burping while I talk. All of these, in fact, have hydrogen bonding. So I can't rule any of them out based on rule number one as being higher or lower in boiling point. So I'm going to have to move to number two. The larger the molecule, the higher the boiling point, and the less branching, the higher the boiling point. So looking at this, you can see that the longest molecule, this guy right here, this is an NH2 with a big old long chain. He's the largest molecule because he's got so many carbons and all of these London forces embedded into these, uh, this hydrocarbon chain. He's going to have the greatest ability to stick on other molecules of himself, just like a long piece of Velcro, than any of these other guys. Hence, the correct answer, the molecule that has the highest boiling point, is molecule B. The answer to this question down here is the middle one. If you want to know why, I'll explain it right now. For this question, I'm once again asked which of these molecules has the highest boiling point. Now, if you'll pardon me for this, I've actually drawn the molecule shown as skeleton structures because it's just easier and saves me time. As we look at these molecules, you'll notice that all of them are constitutional isomers of each other. That means they all have the exact same molecular formula. They're just bonded together in slightly different ways. In this case, I've got a nitrogen in the center of all of these carbons. This one's on the end, and this one's kind of in the middle somewhere. You'll also notice that all of them have about the exact same amount of branching as each other. So I can't use rule number two, looking at the size of the molecule or the amount of branching, to be able to determine which of them has a higher boiling point than the other. So what I'm going to do is turn to rule number one. Does any, do any of these molecules have hydrogen bonding? Well, yeah, you can see that I've got a nitrogen bonded to two hydrogens here, and I've got a nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen here. So both of these molecules have hydrogen bonding. In the case over here, I do not have any hydrogen bonding because this nitrogen is not bonded to any hydrogens. It's just stuck to carbon. So that means this molecule is obviously going to have the lowest boiling point. But then between these two, which one is going to have the higher boiling point? Well, hopefully you can see the answer is going to be the one with more hydrogen bonding. This nitrogen is bonded to two hydrogens, which is twice the amount of hydrogen bonding potential as this one, which is only bonded to one. More hydrogen bonding means more stickiness between molecules, and hence more heat required to get them to separate and convert from a liquid to a gas. In other words, higher boiling point, which means that this molecule is the answer.